Redditors who have traveled to other countries. What was the biggest culture shock you experienced? In many SE Asian countries getting caught trying to scam someone doesn't have too much a level of shame. It is just throw hands up and dang nice try, we're still good. For example, arrive in Hanoi and tell taxi driver your hotel. He drives you while talking on phone. You arrive somewhere that isn't your hotel. And some nice guy who speaks English comes out to explain your hotel burned down last week. Stay here instead. If you refuse to pay the driver until he takes you to see your burned down hotel. Everyone shrugs and laughs. Then you get dropped off at your perfectly intact hotel that didn't burn down after all. Pay the cab. And all is good. This looks freaking hilarious in my head. I'm Chinese living in Australia at the moment. Travel to Spain. I looked super retarded when walking into a restaurant at 6pm for dinner. Apparently they have dinner at 10pm. Spain in the summer. Showing up at the restaurant at 10pm thinking we missed dinner. Since no one was there. Staff only started to show up. Apparently Spanish are even late for dinner. Garbage trucks played fur as they rode around. And it sounded like ice cream truck music. Taiwan. I sort of miss hearing it in the distance. In case anyone is wondering, it's because people are supposed to bring out their trash and throw it in the truck, not put it outside for collection. They usually come around twice a day and play their music to announce themselves. Another fun Taiwan culture shock, in fancy malls and stores. At closing time the staff lines up at the exits to say goodbye and bow as you leave. It is not necessarily a culture shock from traveling to another country. I'm from London, but I'm of Irish decent. I stayed with some friends, one American, the other Scottish. While I had exams in Scotland, I stayed with them for about two weeks. Five days in, I called my mum and asked her if we ate potatoes more than most because the whole time I hadn't had potatoes. I ended up going 12 days without potatoes. They didn't even have baking potatoes. Going to a mall in Manila, Philippines, guards with guns at the doors, checking bags, it being as busier than Christmas time here in Canada, on a weekday. Even driving through small towns, guards outside of businesses with semi-automatic rifles, it seemed crazy to me. <laughs> Lived in Japan, the less obvious one was when going to other people's houses, they would leave out slippers to wear, I have size 9 US 11 feet and they'd leave these dainty women's slippers out for me i would explain i was fine to just walk around in socks as they didn't have slippers but since this was rude they would end up raiding their slipper supply to try and find a pair that fitted every time witnessing different funeral customs in india and nepal what struck me is that death is so much more hidden away in north america in the south of india a funeral procession came down the street carrying the body of a young woman tied to a big pink comfy looking armchair hung with marigolds. In the north of India, I saw bodies burning on the open funeral pyres along the riverside ghats, and even saw human bodies that had been placed in the Ganges floating by. In Nepal I was invited to a funeral and watched as they built a wooden pyre beforehand. While my Nepali friends and I watched, they told me that it was considered good luck to see a body coming to a funeral. It was just so out in the open. It was culture shock for me. But I liked that nobody was expected to hold back their tears or hide their grief discreetly away. In fact, my friend says that even if you are not fond of the person who died, you should try to show some tears anyway out of respect. I recently read a book called Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. It's a memoir of working at a crematory, but it also deals with the narrator's realizations about death and what she comes to believe, and she talks a great deal about how death in the western world is something we hide and do our best to erase. It was pretty eye-opening. You might enjoy it, if you're interested in that sort of thing. China. Diapers are not a thing there. Not for old people. Not for your people. I would walk down streets and lo and behold, there's an adult holding a baby above a trash can as it takes a nasty butt crap. I remember waiting in line at the Forbidden City and a woman in front of me suddenly dropped row, squatted, and just took a dump on the sidewalk. A police officer had to come explain to her how that wasn't allowed, and she looked so confused. Here's one that applies broadly to travel for me, in Australia. 
You can travel 4000 kilometers to Perth from Sydney and people are going to be mostly the same as they were in Sydney, in my opinion. In England, you can travel an hour and find a whole different accent and way of life to the one you left. It's such a small place, but the more you start unpacking it, the bigger and bigger it gets. I guess the point is wherever you go, people are exactly the same while simultaneously being completely different. It sounds stupid but I think it's the truth. The difference is, if you travel to a different part of Oz, they will think your local beer is shite. I'm from Australia and grew up with a big grassy backyard. Moving to Tokyo at age 7 and living in an apartment with a paved over common area and no grass anywhere, except the Australian embassy, was pretty crappy. I remember one day at uni in Brisbane, Australia, I was talking to a Hong Kong exchange student who was amazed at the amount of grass that was there. People were walking around on the grass, sitting on the grass, playing on the grass which completely amazed her. At the university she went to in Hong Kong there was pretty much no grass, except around the main administrative building. Taught English in Mexico for a year. I was shocked at how friendly and inviting everyone is and how simple life can be. Life is not easy for most folks but they make it work. Their life hacks are crazy and the pace of life is great. I had a hard time when I got back to the states and had to adjust to speeding cars, 5 lane freeways and the feeling of always being in a rush. Definitely, a lot of safe places in Mexico and I just absolutely love the normal, hard working kind Mexicans. Beautiful culture, beautiful country, beautiful people. Shame what's happening to them and I absolutely wish nothing but the best of those people. I wish one day they can feel safe living in that beautiful country. After living in Central Asia for 2 years, coming back to the US was terrifying. Grocery stores? I haven't seen so much food in forever. Houses? Actually built well. People? I practically forgot that I was white. I wake up every morning and eat a half bagel and cream cheese with fresh clean fruit that won't give me homesickness. And I can expect the electricity to stay on and for the water to keep on coming out of the sink clean. A half year later and it's still crazy. America and their weird tax system. In the UK, what price you see on the shelf is the price you pay. Oh sweet. This album is only $9.99. I'll buy it. That'll be $10.56 please. The freak. Visited Belarus and the washrooms there were. Def not the standards I'm used to. The toilets were basically a wood bench with a hole and a bucket underneath that you sit on to do your business. It was uncomfortable and smelled like heck. It's surprisingly difficult to go on something that is not comfortable. Travel to Japan. Amazed at how people pay attention to what we say after we become friends. In Brazil, you have to be super interesting to keep people there with you. Not really shocking, but kind of funny. I live in the UK and I'm from the Netherlands. I was having dinner with my boyfriend the other day when he got up to go to the toilet. In shock I told him I'm still eating so he shouldn't go to the toilet. After that there was just an awkward moment before we realized we came upon a cultural difference. I just realized that I would not leave a table when someone is still eating either, something I never actually thought about. Probably I would not ask someone else to stay though but assume that it must be really urgent if she or he really wants to go. I'm Filipino. We take off our shoes whenever we visit someone's house. The first time I went to my friend's house in the states, I had this existential crisis. What do you mean I don't have to take off my shoes was me for a while. No fast food restaurants. Hot as holy freaking heck. Mud houses with cool lizards slipping through holes. My sister lived in one. Seemingly chill rodeos down the street where horses walk through the crowds to get into the arena. Oh, and the cars. My god, the classic cars I never thought I'd get a chance to ride in. I went to Cuba when I was 8 to visit family. Crap was intense. Also, first time I saw horse wang up close. But that's not really a culture shock. That was just shock. Seeing police military armed with assault rifles in the airport in Paris was unexpected. Police in North American airports only carry sidearms. I went to Egypt, two years before the revolution, and Israel it was weird seeing soldiers walk around with rifles. Visited Spain for a week. No one in Spain wears sweatshirts and pajama bottoms out in public. Everyone looks put together. 
It's pretty neat. The thing that was hard for unassertive Lil Me was dealing with the people running around selling cheap little whistles and stuff. They would literally circle the perimeter of our tour group making annoying bird noises with the whistle things. Same in Germany. It makes me embarrassed when I go on an American base and you see tons of people in ratty sweats and unmade hair walking about. You'll even see it outside base sometimes. Telltale give away someone's American. That, and walking around with jogging running shoes. Germans tend to wear nice shoes when they're out and about and tons of scarves. Definitely Denmark. You could play a game where you would only be allowed to breathe when you had a cigarette in sight. And you would never come close to dying. When I went to the US for the first time and I ordered iced tea I was unpleasantly surprised to find out that their iced tea isn't sweetened like the stuff we have in Canada. As a kid I thought everything in the US had sugar. It sounds like you didn't go south enough for sweet tea to become the default over just regular iced tea. One of my biggest culture shocks was actually returning to America after 8 months in Brazil. I had forgotten how polite Americans can be. Saying excuse me pardon me in Brazil I was lucky if I even got a dirty look from the person that bumped into me. Also lived in the Middle East and I'd have to say covering up for the first time was definitely a culture shock. When I came to America I found it hilarious there were little electric powered shopping carts that one could sit in that were seemingly always being used by morbidly obese people. Also drive through. Yeah, those were designed for people with actual disabilities. I guess for some laziness is motivation enough to use those. Also, ironically enough, sometimes drive throughs are slower than just going into the store. Not being able to walk a quarter mile to the beach by myself we were explicitly told that we needed to have a guy with us at all times. Really frustrating to have the ability to walk wherever I want whenever I want taken away from me. When I went to Singapore and saw how clean the roads and pretty much everything else was, I was told I couldn't bring food and eat on the buses and other things like that. That's because we are inconsiderate M. If the rules weren't enforced you'd see the buses being a garbage dump within a day. As an American, bagging my own groceries in Europe, especially Germany, the stress of bagging and trying to get my change out while being rushed by the cashier to hurry up was a struggle at times, especially places like Aldi that don't have a counter to keep your bagged groceries on. And this is from a guy who bagged groceries as a part-time job when I was younger. In Aldi you're not supposed to bag at the counter, you put it all back in the trolley then bag once you've moved away. Everything in some cities in Israel are also bomb shelters, bus stops, kids playgrounds, and just seeing soldiers everywhere I mean everywhere you turn, oddly feels safer. Coming from the west coast of the US, to the east coast I was pretty freaked out at first at the number of buildings with fallout shelter signs on them. I went to the CCCP in 1978, coming back to the USA was kind of a culture shock, the excessiveness of everything. I still kind of feel that way 40 years later. Probably would have been a good comrade. Academic culture. I did my high school in Australia and then went home to Indonesia for uni. Law major. I did struggle for a bit with my native language at first but eventually I managed. However I never have managed to overcome the academic culture. In western academic environment, you are encouraged to have discussions. Be critical with your thinking. Support your argument and what not. In Indonesia, students are trained to memorize text since primary school. I recall having a conversation with one of the foreign docent who said that most of her Asian students can memorize the answer from class notes text down to the dots and comas. She suspected cheating but eventually learned that Asian memorize the text. Meanwhile I struggle to find the benefit of memorizing something as the class notes text law may be changed from time to time. Even the local docent here varied, most want exam answers to be a word by word copy of the text, I always cheat on their classes lol. Some docent who have studied abroad relies on answers based on arguments, my answer could be wrong but with the right arguments it would be right, social science ftw. These type of docents are generally avoided in my uni as most students get bad grades because they memorize class notes texts. Even in classes where docents tried to create a discussion, it will end up being a very short mundane discussion, where nobody contribute to anything and I look like an butthole for trying to contribute to the discussion. Also, I know people who graduated that never own read a textbook before, just by relying on their other class notes. 
Same thing also happened when I took my master degree. One of the best Indonesian uni in the country. TL. DR. Asian academics memorize and western academics use arguments. Iceland. Kiss on the lips from a friend's wife as greeting. Not a making out kind of kiss by any means but it embarrassed the heck out of this at the time very young and naive catholic schoolboy. Somalia. Ethiopia. Eritrea. Life can be. Cheap. Meaningless. And yet. Some fantastic. Generous people with incredible zest for life. The Netherlands. The directness which is operationally indistinguishable from rudeness. The realization that tolerance and judgment are not mutually exclusive. The US. Mind-blowingly good customer service. The casual friendliness of most everyone. Doubly so in the South. Bewildering widespread religious nutbaggery. The realization that if it's all you know, anything can seem. Right? Obvious? Unavoidable. Australia. Straya. M8. I dunno. Still working this one out. Overall, the realization that yes, people are people everywhere, but culture can make a phenomenal difference. What we take for granted, really isn't, at all, but an open mind and a predisposition for seeing the fundamental goodness in people can take you a long way, no matter where you are. Korean women and their selfies. Go to any coffee shop after 5pm and you can find girls taking selfies for up to an hour. There are tons of stray cats and dogs just running around Istanbul. A lot of them are fat, cause all the tourists seem feed them. Hamburg, and Germany in general, reminded me of home US oddly enough. I had been living in England for the previous 4 months at the time, so maybe it was just the driving on the right side of the road, but there was something about the demeanor of the people that just felt more familiar than the English. Descendants of German migrants make up the largest portion of the US population. I was born in Northern Ireland. When I was 7 my father had a consulting job in Turkey so the family moved there for a year. We lived in an apartment block in Ankara. The people around saw me as a white kid who didn't speak very good Turkish and assumed I was American. I was abused, spat on, stoned and once even got attacked by some kids with bows and sharpened arrows. I haven't had anything major but the thing that I remember the most was when I went to the US and how large the meals were. So much food for one meal. I find it interesting that no one talks about going to the bathroom in different countries, which is quite often the first thing that directly affects anyone while traveling abroad. Repressed memories. Thailand. Watch movie. Funny commercials beforehand. Those ridiculously sentimental ones. And the king's anthem. With video montage accompaniment of him. And you stand for that or you are in deep crap. They don't play around with less majest laws in Thailand. German here. When I was 16 years old I went on a high school student exchange to San Francisco. It was a few months after Columbine. I had to walk through a metal detector and was padded down at school every single day. While I really liked the people in the city, I still decided right then that American society is fricked on a fundamental level. Add to that the fact that my host family, very nice and friendly people, told me immediately upon arrival that a pistol was stashed in my room's cupboard and that I needed to know where it is. Just in case, at that point in my life I had never handled or even touched a real firearm. The culture shock was intensified by the fact that all these American high schoolers drove cars at age 16. Most knew how to handle guns. But when they came to Germany to visit us we learned the hard way that none of them could handle even tiny amounts of booze. America. I'm from Denmark but took a road trip across the US with my dad last year. Now, I've heard a lot about how unfriendly Americans can be, how they hate tourists, and don't want us sticking our nose in their stuff. I have never ever been so wrong. What I instead met, was a ton of helpful and nice people. Even when we drove across Arizona and our car broke down, a guy who saw it from his house came over to help us, and even called one of his friends, who owns a garage since he owed him a favor. All in all, nothing but joy from here. Iraq America. Traveling around England I found that a lot of the hotel's B&Bs didn't have shower curtains that covered the whole tub, but rather a piece of glass that covered half the tub. I never got the hang of showering without getting water everywhere. The blatant physical relationships and casual prostitution. When I was in Brazil, 
two guys I ran into took me to a bar. One of them asked how I liked the very pretty girl serving us. I told him she was cute and he proceeded to offer her 75 real to spend the night with the three of us. I fully expected him to get clobbered, but they started haggling instead. I quickly told him I was only talking about how I thought she was pretty, without intending to frick her, since I was married at the time. My monogamy seemed to surprise my hosts tremendously. I then asked them how they knew she'd be willing to, ahem, negotiate a price on her affection and the oldest of the two told me that all women there would be willing to go with you, provided you offer them enough money. Thanks but no thanks. I moved to America from Japan. Let's see. When I went to McDonald's, I saw a lot of people just leave their tray and wrappers on the table, instead of tossing them out. A lot of my classmates had a it's okay if we don't get caught attitude towards breaking rules. Underage drinking and drug use was considered a normal part of being a teenager. There were a bunch of people who burned with passion to make the world better by tackling huge issues, like North Korean refugees or African blood diamonds, which usually consisted of holding a bake sale. And holy frick you guys really love your guns. This makes me want to buy another gun. Going to do that after work now. Welcome home. I've been living in Korea for 5 years. When I got here, I'd already done a fair amount of traveling, so I didn't really expect much in the way of culture shock. I was fine with the food and language and manners, so nothing really fazed me. Like 3 months into my first year, I was driving around with a Korean friend when he put on some music. It was Pitbull. We started talking about hip hop and what each of us liked. I mentioned Kanye. I'll never forget what my Korean friend said. Kanye? Who's that? That was the biggest, mind-blowing thing that has happened to me in the entire 5 years I've been here. Someone that was a proclaimed hip-hop fan had never heard of Kanye West. I just remember thinking, what the frick country am I in right now? Someone needs to send Kanye to Korea, stat, not to inform them for his reaction to an entire nation full of people who neither know nor care who he is. I lived in Abu Dhabi, UAE. I couldn't hold my wife's hand in public, but the locals, men, would wear their disdash robes and hold each other's hands by their pinkies and exchange smoochy kisses on the cheeks. This along with the rampant classism, misogyny, racism, and insanely opulent capitalism made for some serious culture shocks. This is rubbish. No one gets arrested for that in the UAE. Japan from the US. Definitely the restrooms. I'm a girl, so the squatty potties were hard to get used to. They also don't have hand towels or dryers. You bring your own bandana sort of thing to dry your hands. I'm a guy, and I just could not figure out how you were supposed to use the squat toilets. I gave up on it and stuck to the western style washrooms. I lived in Pakistan in the mid 90s. Truly scary place. The day to day was weird. I lived behind a thick wall. Armed security. Driver. Maid. Cook. Etc. But it was how the help would frick with a 10 year old kid. For example. They had geckos. Never seen one in my life. But they told us they were poisonous and would fall down from the ceiling at night and land on people killing them. I slept underneath the sheets for months because of this joke. My other which made me never want to go outside because I'm mortified of snakes and this one was actually true. Ravens would grab cobras thinking they were dead, the cobra would attack the raven mid-flight, and the raven would drop the cobra in the yard. Yay frick that crap. It actually happened to a friend of mine and the cobra killed their dog. I couldn't wait to get the heck out of there. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.